All right. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. So we have a wonderful webinar today and i um, very anxious to get started. Can you see my screen OK, Lucy? Yes. OK, great. So if you don't know, Sierra Circuits is a Bay Area PCB assembler and PCB manufacturer. Uh, we specialize in military and high technology uh, PCBs. Um, and RF PCBs, uh, which is a lot of what this webinar is about, and just high-speed PCBs as well. Uh, so if you haven't already requested a quote, I encourage you to do so. It'll help us fund these uh, webinars. So in terms of what the topics are today, here's the title slide. As you can see, we're really gonna dive into uh, layout techniques, uh, at least that's what my uh, presentation is about, and then I'll hand it over uh, to Brian. Okay. So what signal integrity challenges do you have in high-speed PCB designs? Well, so when PCBs are operating, you know, at even frequencies beyond 10 gigahertz, uh, several critical signal integrity challenges arise, such as impedance discontinuities, crosstalk, signal reflection, uh, and even EMI. So when the DK isn't uniform across the board or is too high, it can lead to signal integrity issues. And so we're gonna talk about material selection first. So high dielectric constants tend to increase the capacitive and inductive coupling between the traces. And this means that the traces start interacting more uh, together, leading to crosstalk and noise. So you wanna select a material with a higher dissipation factor. Sorry, selecting material with higher dissipation factor will increase the risk of signal attenuation. So you don't wanna do that. Also, you have to be aware of the CTE of the copper and dielectric. Uh, if they don't match, you can have uh, separation uh, even after uh, the build of the PCB. So to, in order to reduce the signal loss, you want to opt for materials with low dielectric constant. And some of the optimal performance for high-speed PCBs can be achieved with these materials below, like a Rogers 4350, an Itera, a Megtron. And these are great materials you should talk to your fabricator about the cost of the materials and make sure it really uh, meets your end end use requirement. Also, you can opt for a hybrid stack up, which would be less of the using less of the costly materials. Now, when you opt for a hybrid stack up, you can also have introduce other manufacturing issues. Um, you know, like when you are programming your drill machines, you wanna make sure that you program it just in, just right for the hybrid materials. When you program your plasma, you wanna make sure you program it just right for the mixed materials. So although it will get you a less costly stack up, it could also introduce more complications in the manufacturing. So you have to talk to your manufacturer to make sure they can handle that uh, type of uh, construction. So here's an example of a, a high-speed stack up. So if you place your RF traces and components on the external layers, you can easily see you know, your, your outside layers. You can see that things are good. Um, you can measure easier prior to solder mask. Um, and I always encourage you to add a copper pour to reduce any kind of EMI issues uh, appropriately with proper spacing. You definitely do not want to place two adjacent signal layers together. This will definitely increase signal interference. So you want to properly create your stack up in terms of placing your ground and power. If you can have ground as your second layer, uh, layer one signal, sec second layer ground, all the better. And then you want to ensure proper spacing between your layers and in manufacturing, 
uh, we manufacture with cores and prepregs. So a core does not change its dielectric height uh, after lamination. So a lot of customers put cores on the outer layer. So layer one, two would be a core. And this ensures a consistent dielectric thickness uh, throughout the length of the board and the length of the sheet that we use to manufacture. You know, also you can be very conscientious about component placement and how you separate the sensitive uh, high-speed signals, RF signals from, let's say, power uh, components. So what are the best strategies to achieve good controlled impedance? So in order to maintain signal integrity, uh, you wanna ensure consistent trace widths, uh, which less copper, the better. So it's easier to etch, you know, consistent thickness. Um, any variations in any of these parameters can lead to impedance discontinuities. And in general, uh, a larger or a thicker copper trace will help reduce impedance. And uh, here's some, you know, some strategies listed, how you want to route your, your traces. Um, and then specifically, you know, you want a, a nice solid ground pour, but if you have to route uh, signals over two different, um, you know, reference planes or, you know, voltages, you need to incorporate stitching capacitors. And these capacitors provide a continuous return path for your high-speed signals. You also want to limit the number of vias in the high-speed uh, signal paths because each via can introduce a small amount of impedance and too many vias can disrupt the signal flow causing reflections and loss. So, and then lastly, you're going to want to minimize the length of your high-speed signal traces if you can. Long traces will increase the risk of signal loss, delay, impedance mismatch, etc. So we have an impedance calculator on our website, and if you haven't been to our tool section of our website, uh, please, I encourage you to take, check it out. Lots of powerful tools there all right now are free. Uh, and so I think we're going to do a demo. Is that right? Yes, Pranav. Yes. Okay, I'll stop sharing then. Uh, hello everyone, uh, this is our uh, impedance calculator tool. Uh, it's based on the 2D numerical solutions of Maxwell's equation and so it renders uh, a very uh, accurate results for your engineering and manufacturing analysis. So uh, on the mm, uh, left hand side you'll see the structure a different structure that we have available and the models. So we have uncoated microstrip, coated microstrip, embedded and strip line. And we have different models such as single-ended differential pair. We have coplanar models as well as coplanar without ground models. So to choose, you, you need to select the uh, required model and the structure and you'll see the calculators which are available with that in, that, in those categories. So we have uh, a normal model and then we also have a composite dielectric model where you'll have, if you have more than two dielectrics in between the trace and your reference, then you can go with the composite model and uh, you'll have a better result uh, in those scenarios. So now click on open and the calculator will open. So let's move on to this calculator. So I opened a coated microstrip differential pair calculator. So here you'll see uh, the image, the how the geometry looks. Below you'll see the units selection drop down where you can uh, choose between the empirical and metric system. By default it will be mills. Now for the demo purpose we'll keep it mills. Uh, you need to enter the dielectric information such as the dielectric height, dielectric constant. Uh, this is a coated geometry that I have selected. So the coating parameters are required, coating heights and the coating dielectric constant. So also you need to enter the trace information such as your uh, trace weight, trace thickness, 
uh, we have one parameter called delta w this parameter is uh, the trace is not of a rectangular shape it takes a trapezoidal shape uh, during manufacturing so this delta w factor takes care of that and uh, we have this table here where there's a guideline of what delta w you should select actually it, be, it is depends on the copper weight so you can refer to this table uh, while entering the delta w so there are two calculations here one is if you know the target impedance you enter the target impedance this target differential impedance and you press calculate w so this will calculate the trace weight uh, for that uh, particular uh, differential impedance and it will show you uh, the other way is you can enter a trace weight of your say if i make 3.4 and i can press calculate zd so the forward calculation is also possible wherein you enter the trace width and you can calculate the impedance it also calculates and displays other parameters like coupling coefficient odd and even mode impedances propagation delay and even the trace inductance mutual inductance and more parameters so yeah so this we also have other calculators along with the impedance like loss crosstalk etc uh, we can check it out on our website yeah thank you